This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. Jessica lives in a neighborhood known as Rich. Jessica likes life. The only thing about life she would change, if she could, is that she would set it all to music. The Tates have more secrets than they do money. We're approaching Mary Campbell's house. Mary too likes life. Unfortunately, life doesn't seem to be too crazy about her. As you can see, the Campbells don't have nearly as much money as the Tates. They do, however, have as many secrets. In last week's episode of Soap, Jody checked into the hospital to become a girl and wound up meeting a girl who would like him to stay a guy. Danny has been running around in disguises, running from the mob. So far, Danny has not been caught, but Chester has been. Jessica met Mary for lunch and saw him kissing Claire. Confused? You won't be after this week's episode of Soap. We begin this week's episode of Soap shortly after Jessica and Mary saw Chester and Claire. Oh, Mary, thank you so much for coming home with me. Feeling any better? Uh-huh. Good. I really feel like such a fool, Mary. I mean, all those years of not believing, and I, I still find it hard to believe. I mean, not that I don't believe it, Mary. I mean, I do believe it. I saw it with my very own eyes. It was Chester and Claire, and he was kissing her. And do you know what is really funny, Mary? Chester doesn't even like to kiss. <laughs> don't keep going over it, Jess. You know what, Mary? I think we're cursed. Who? Us. All of us. I think that there is a curse on this family. Well, if there isn't, there should be. <laughs> Benson, huh? do you know where we keep the family photo album? Yeah. Oh, good. Would you mind bringing it to me? Why do you want to look at those depressing pictures? <laughs> Benson, they're family photographs. They are depressing. A bunch of ugly people in old clothes. And then you got those dried up pressed flowers that fall out all over the place. And then the pictures crumble and you cry. Every time you look at those pictures, I got to do the floor. Mary, I think I am on to something. I think that in those pictures, we'll find the answer. Mary, did you see the omen? No. Well, I mean, nobody believed Lee Remick when she said that her son was the devil and he was trying to kill her. And you know what happened? He killed her. And then, I mean, uh, of course, everyone said, well, she was right, but I mean, it did her a lot of good. She was dead by then. <laughs> oh, thank you, Benson, thank you. Oh. Oh, look at this. Gee, I, I, I'm sorry, Benson, I... Look, Mary, look. Randolph. And where is Randolph, Mary? Jesse, no one knows where Randolph is. Exactly. Our brother, our brother, who fathered an illegitimate child with a Swedish maid and then disappeared into the wilds of Ecuador. <laughs> Don't you think that's peculiar? Jesse, Randolph was peculiar. No, Mary, he wasn't. He was cursed. Jesse, Randolph wasn't cursed. He was nuts. <laughs> Any man who would go to Ecuador to sell wall-to-wall -wall carpet is not a <laughs> Mary, look at this. Who's that? Well, I don't know who it is, Mary, but I saw the exorcist, and that face is worse. Oh, that's Mr. Tate. Oh, my God, Mary, it is. It's Chester. Yeah, on your wedding day. It is not, Benson. It's our Halloween party because I'm dressed as Chiquita Banana. You think I wear bananas on my head to a wedding? Don't ask me. I wish I knew someone that removes curses. Jesse, we are not cursed. There is no such thing as a curse. Mary, Mary, how can you say that? I mean, Mary, look at me. I married a man who does you know what? That's not a curse. <laughs> I have one illegitimate daughter who sleeps around. It's not a curse, Jess. Well, I have one daughter who doesn't even go out on dates. That's not a curse. 
Daddy still believes the war's going on. Not a curse. All right, Mary. Your first husband committed suicide. You have one son who's gay who's going to have a sex change operation. You have one son who's a spy. You have one stepson who lives with a dummy. And you have another stepson who came between Corinne and me, and your husband won't make love to you. You're right, we're cursed. <laughs> Mrs. Campbell. Yes. Ah, I'm your son Danny's employer. Uh, may I come in? Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, nice. Where is he? Ah, uh, house hunting. He's been driving me crazy, you know. Every time he goes into a house, he's going to look around all the room. <laughs> Mrs. Campbell, about Danny, you know. I'm a little bit uh, worried about him. He leaves so suddenly. And... Uh, listen, Mr. Ogie. Smith. <laughs> George jo Smith. My friends call me Georgie or Georgie boy. My mother calls me Face. My father calls. Forget about my father. He's not here. Danny's not here. He's huh? in Europe. You have his address in Europe? No. no. Just Europe. Well, you know, this creates a little problem for me because my boss wants me to find Danny so bad. He says if I don't find him, then nobody's ever going to see me again. <laughs> Oh, uh, I know who you are. George o. Smith. The... You want to kill Danny, don't you? Kill? Kill, kill, kill Danny? Where, where do you get such crazy ideas from? Kill Danny, eh? Ma, lachem, shalom, we go both in the sugar of the high releases. Rabbi Mac will be here collecting some money for threes. <laughs> Hello, mister. You look like a fine gentleman. Nice hair. <laughs> nice Jewish people. Campbellbits. It's a nice Jewish name. <laughs> it's Campbell. Not Jewish. Well, forget the trees then. I don't know why they want more trees anyway. Israel is a jungle from the trees. <laughs> I'll get you some money. No, 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 hey, I spill the moment, though, you know. There's a lot of phony balloons going around here collecting for things they just make up. You got credentials? Credentials? Yes. Do I have credentials? You want credentials? Five thousand years of suffering. How's that for a credential? <laughs> you want credentials? I will give you credentials. All right, all right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, credentials, he asks. Uh, bar mitzvah, chopped chicken liver, Tel Aviv. A uh, regular credential. Mr. Schmarty Pants, your head should grow in the ground like an onion. You want credentials. Wholesale a credential. All right, all right, Rabbi. I was just trying to be careful. There you go. And uh, Mrs. Campbell will be in touch with you, eh? You want more credential? No, I don't. I'll want give you some more credential. I'm sorry, Rabbi. Let me give you a check. Ah, uh -huh. ah, it's me. Daddy! Oh, oh, God. You know who that was? They want to kill you. I know, Ma. You got to get out of here. Ma, it's all right. They're gone. You're not a spy, are you? No, Ma, I'm not. Oh, God. Hi, <laughs> uh. <laughs> Hiya, how you doing? <laughs> Mary, will you give him money to every crackpot that comes around? Bert, it, it's... It's for a good cause, right? I know, that's what they all say. What is this for? Trees, I bet, right? Huh? Trees? Huh? What is it with your country and trees? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they got a lot of dogs, Bert. <laughs> Danny! Danny! Help! <laughs> oh, Danny! I was just leaving. Boy, Danny, you had me fooled. <laughs> it's Danny. <laughs> I know, Bert. I gotta go. Ma, I'll come back again soon, I promise. You know the back way? Oh, okay. That's a great outfit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mayor. <laughs> hey, Mayor, I've been looking for you. All day, where were you? I was with Jessica. Hey, Mary. What do you say, uh... How about we go upstairs? Why? <laughs> Why? I see it's been so long you don't remember, all right? <laughs> okay, now. See, uh, Mary, what I'm trying to say is... <clears throat> why don't we, uh, go upstairs? 
You know, and kind of lounge around and you know, <laughs> you know, Mary, I saw Dr. Medlow today, and guess what? What? I think I can. <laughs> now? Yes, <laughs> Not now. <laughs> not now? I'm just not in the mood. Not in the mood. <laughs> not in the mood for six months. All I've been hearing from you is when. Now all of a sudden, it's I'm not in the mood. <laughs> How can I be in the mood? This morning we took Jody to the hospital. This afternoon Jessica found out Chester has been unfaithful to her. And a few moments ago... I found out the mob is trying to kill Danny. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> well, that kind of lets the air out of my tires. <laughs> <laughs> so to speak. You know. <laughs> No, no talk. We've talked enough. That's it for talking. Tim, I'm so unhappy. You? What do you think? This thrills me? Corinne, you can't be here. This is for priests. Tim, you know that guy I live with, you know, Peter? Come on now, Corinne. Don't start. Come on now. Up on your feet. But I have to talk to you. No. We've done enough talking. Leaving. You're going to leave. You're not going to talk. Come on now. Up. But, Tim... No, no, but... Tim, only one word I listen to. Goodbye, Tim. Well, that's two words. I say goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, Corinne. Goodbye, Tim. Good. I like that. You did that well. Mm -hmm. I need your help. <laughs> this business with Corinne is getting to be too much for me. See... Being a priest means more to me than anything ever has in my life. Ten, twelve years ago, remember what I was like in high school? I majored in motorcycles. I was a bum, a nothing. And then I found you. I came back to the church and I became a priest. And I love it. I love what I'm doing. And I've been really happy. Except for one thing. Corinne. I mean, she stirred up all these old feelings. Hey, I know I'm a man, and I know we all have those feelings, but I think I'm getting them too much, you know? <laughs> so I I'm thinking, uh, maybe there's something wrong with me in the priest department. <laughs> I understand tests, and I know you've given some humdingers in your day, but... Uh, <laughs> are you going to send Corindon once a week for the rest of my life? <laughs> If you are, I think we're going to get to a week there that could embarrass everyone. I mean, I don't know. I thought I had the calling. But now, I don't know. Do I? I'd ask for a sign. But quite frankly, knowing the kind of signs you give, burning bushes, flooding the world, I think I'll pass on the sign. I mean... You get a little flamboyant with the signs there. <laughs> Excuse me, flamboyant. I'm telling God he's flamboyant. Well, thanks for listening. I feel better just having talked. And if you got an answer, all right, you could give me a sign. <laughs> but nothing crazy now. Please. Dennis, what do you mean it's not such a good idea that I have the operation? I don't know. I mean, a sex change operation is such a drastic step. What are you talking about? I don't know. Dennis? Well, it's just that... Well, I've been thinking, and maybe it's not such a good idea. Why? Dennis, what's going on? I'm gonna marry Jill. You what? Excuse me. I, uh... <laughs> 
I have to go meet Mandelbaum here. <laughs> See, he, he, uh, he challenged me to a race around the hospital floor. I'll be back in a week or two. You're gonna marry her? Yes. Well, that's one wedding night they could show on Saturday morning television. Jody, I'm sorry. Oh, I love it. The homosexual and the starlet are getting married. You'll kill each other fighting over the electric rollers. Jody. You're gonna marry your dentist? Do you have any idea what you're getting yourself into? Jody, I'm scared. Oh, I don't blame you. No, I have to do it. Jody, I'm a football player. That's all I know. And soon I'll have to earn a living from having been a football player. I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I can't do anything else, Jody. Look, even if you had the operation, I mean, sooner or later, people would find out. I'd never be able to find work. I can't do it. I don't want to marry her, but I'm scared. I guess you'll have trouble believing it, but I love you. And I'll always love you. Sorry, Jody. Okay, I'm fine. I am fine. Hmm. Sure, I'm fine. Boy, I can really pick them. No sense being a girl now. Actually, there's no sense in being. It's checkout time. Make life a lot easier for me. Mom, Bert, Anita Bryant. <laughs> Time for your pill, Mr. Dallas. Nurse, hemorrhage in 514, quick! <laughs> Would you look at this? Very nice. <laughs> What, are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> Just a few of these, and a couple of the yellow, and love the lavender ones, and a whole bunch of these. I wonder how long this will take. Jody? Jody, did I ever tell you about my wife? I know uh, you're not in the mood right now to hear stories by old men, but uh, you'll listen. Because it, it could help. You see, my wife, Jody, <laughs> my wife was a wonder. I swear she was a miracle, Jody. She used to walk down the street, the whole Bronx would light up. I, I used to stare at her in amazement, thinking how lucky I was. And after 15 years, I still stared at that woman in amazement. She was all I needed, Jody. I had the whole world right there. If I died, I could have died happy. The, uh... Trouble was, that she died. <coughs> One day, he wakes up, a little lump. Six months later, bing, bing, the light goes out on my life. Oh, boy. I tell you, I walked around for months. I was doubled over. It's like somebody slugged me. I went through the normal routine of daily living. I ate, I slept, I went to the bathroom. And in between these three major activities, Jody, <laughs> there was a lot of pain. I never thought I, I'm ever gonna fall in love again. But, well, a few
few years later, I met a redhead. Not like my wife, no. Entirely different. So I ate, I slept, I went to the bathroom, and uh, one day, I laughed. And one day I noticed, I, I, I laughed. Then another day I hummed. And then soon after, I sang. Well, I married her. No, Jody. If we weren't happy, ah, uh, in an entirely different ways. It wasn't, wasn't better, it wasn't worse. It, uh, it was different. There I was, miserable Barney Gerber, happy again. <laughs> you see, Jody, you see how smart I was. I thought I'll never love again. I thought I'll never be happy again, huh? I also thought I'm, I'll never have to say goodbye again. Mm. Yeah, ten years we were happy, Jody. And then one day, ah, some maniac with, with bourbon in his blood, something on his mind, runs through a red light. And stops Barney Gerber right in mid-song. Ah, uh, it was 16 months ago. Well, since then, I, I have eaten, I have slept. Occasionally, I went to the bathroom. <laughs> and I, uh, I had a heart attack. <coughs> so I said, Gerber, that's all. You're finished, forget it. Well, that's never going to happen again. Once was wonderful. Twice was... Incredible. A third time? Well, you're kidding yourself. Come on. A third time would be asking for a miracle. But you know something, Jody? I don't really believe that. If I believed that, I wouldn't be here in this hotel letting them sew Dacron into my heart to hold it together. I wouldn't be here begging my blood to visit my heart at least a few times a day. You know, to keep it going, I wouldn't be here at all, Jody, if I didn't believe there could be a third time. Ah, listen, listen, my kid. I know that you don't feel so terrific right now, but wait, Jody. Wait. Someday, I guarantee you, you're going to hear somebody laughing. And you'll turn around. And it'll be you. Are the Tates and the Campbells cursed? Or are they just having a run of bad luck? Is Danny's rabbi disguise good enough to fool the mob? Is it good enough for him to perform Passover services? Will Father Tim get a sign from God? A phone call? A mailgram? Something? Will Jody live? These questions and many others will be answered on next week's episode of Soap.